Enough to Let the Light In is the Teatro Vista production, part of Destino's Chicago International Theater Festival. The two stars, Melissa Dupre, who you know as Sarah, Dr. Sarah Ortiz from Grey's Anatomy, and Lissandra Tena, who you know from AMC's Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, the two stars of our show here to chat all about it. Thank you so much for your time today. Good morning. Thank you for having us. World premiere. It's now at Steppenwolf through October 23rd. Uh, Melissa, let's talk a little bit first. Let's give us a little bit of preview of the, of the show because, you know, it's a night of celebration, but then it turns quite the opposite. You know, I, I think this play is really about a couple who really wants the best for each other and who wants to go forward at this point in their lives because it, they're ready, right? And it's so indicative of a time after coming out of COVID, after coming out of pandemic, where you realize, oh my God, what have I been doing with my life? It's time to move forward. It's time to connect. And you see them at that point where they're really ready to jump forward. But, you know, do you really know a person? Do you really allow a person to know you? When do masks come off? When do the skeletons come out of the closet? And that's what in this very short amount of time in 85 minutes, you get all of that in one thrilling night. <laughs> well, Sandra, what was it like to read the script? Especially, you know, it was from a Mexican American playwright. What was it like, you know, for you to, uh, to read that script and to play the character of, uh, of Cynthia? It was exciting. I actually, um... I read it, I think before I actually came to Chicago, I read it about four times. Um, and, and before we finalized it three times, I just had to make sure this, I, I wasn't seeing things. I wasn't making up stories. <laughs> so it was, it was quite exciting and thrilling. I, I, I love the fact that there's nothing like this on, on stage for two Latinas. Um, so that was really exciting. I mean, I love going to, to theater and, and I love, you know, movies and television shows. And oftentimes, you know, the, the Latin character is some, you know, someone on the side or maybe like a, a, a secondary mm -hmm. storyline, but to have yeah. two leads and to be in a place like Steppenwolf, I mean, that is just an amazing accomplishment that you guys are there till, till the 23rd, but what does it feel like to be able to, you know, to be the two leads and to bring a production like this, uh, to such a grand stage? It's really rare opportunity. It just doesn't happen to really center these two stories that are not centered around being Latina. These are two characters that could literally be ambiguous. It's ambiguous on the page. Um, but the intention of the production is that we center that these could be two people going through the story and, and that their vessel is Latina, right? Like we are both, we are both identify as Latina. It is a Latina theater company. It's a Latina uh, led production, Latina directed, Latina playwright. A lot of the designers are femme identified. And so it really depends on how the production really values and, and sees the artists and gives them that opportunity. I would have never, as a comedian, I'm a stand-up comic and a solo artist and I'm a, a solo artist out of necessity, right? There really isn't a lot of room for people with our intersections and for us to not have to play those intersections as that being the leading part of our of our representation. And so the fact that this play is just allowing us to be these people without having to lead with our identity is truly quite rare and spectacular. And if it wasn't for Teatro Vista, I don't think Leisandra or I would have had such a remarkable opportunity to be in a two person show sustaining on a stage at Steppenwolf. And I think that's the right direction and where we're heading in the future where we just allow our humanity to lead. Oh, exactly. I mean, this is, you know, a little side conversation, but also, you know, just a, a call out to all our, you know, Latino and Latina sisters and, and brothers to go and, and see the show and not only just be happy that it's there, but to go and, and support the arts, because once they, the to. theater sees that people are there, they're going to want to bring more productions and it's going to be more of an open space. And you never know the next theater student or the next person who's going to see that that says, I want to write this next project or I can't, I'm going to audition for a show you know, here, you never know, you know, what the impact of this is going to bring in the future. And it's just so interesting that we are part of the Destinos, the Clata Destinos Latino Theater Festival, and no tiene nada que ver con Latinidad, really doesn't. This show has nothing to do with lat Latinidad other than these are, it, it's because of us. So it's, it's quite remarkable. And yes, we are wonderfully supported by Destinos and the Clata team, but we absolutely need the support 
by the community, by the audiences, by stepping with um, uh, facilitators, supporters, and, and theater goers, so that way we can continue this. It is not cheap to put on this play. Have you seen it? These things are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but well worth it. Well, well worth it. Worth every single penny. Uh, Lysandra, let's talk a little bit about the idea of home and, you know, your character, Cynthia, because I, you know, I've, I've seen previous interviews, you know, with you talking about your teenage years and running away and being in foster care and maybe that identity of home, you know, did that part of the storyline hit really hard for you? Yes, actually, uh, one of the homework assignments was to basically create a backstory for our characters. So um, based on the text on the page, I I realized perhaps this person also shares some familiar territory in terms of growing up in foster care, um, not being close to family, um, not really having, you know, uh, parents, you know, uh, growing up. So it, it, it's good. I've healed, like I said earlier, <laughs> I've healed so I can talk about this, but um, really, yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> no, Melissa, stop it. Um, no, but it's, it's, um, it's very interesting in terms of like wanting to keep that and holding on to it so dear, you know, in terms of um, her, I don't want to give up away too much, but um, but there's just the, somebody the in, of, in the play and and beyond. You know, yeah, we want people to go see the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That this is a person that does not want to let go to the only thing that she has left. Yeah. As far as secrets, what what have you learned? Especially maybe fans reaching out to you on on social media or people talking about this because you know sometimes you know and maybe not to this degree, but a lot of times people date somebody and you know everything's fine the first month for the first six months, and then suddenly they drop a, a secret on you and you're like, oh, it kind of changes the, the whole scope of everything. Have fans come out and, and reached out to you, you know, either after the show or on, on social media? Uh, a, a few people have, and it's the poll that we've been taking. And the poll is, is it real or is it not real? And um, that's who, that's the conversation that I'm getting the most after the play. Not so much about the, the relationship itself it kind of unfolds the way it needs to unfold but some of the ending questions people have been like why this or why that and it, it really does leave you in suspense you have to come see it because there's there's many things that kind of just get left up in the air and that's the really beautiful thing about Paloma Nozica is that she doesn't wrap anything up in a really neat solid bow the way that a lot of other plays do it really it really leaves you like huh, but but what 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 you know mm -hmm. open-ended at the end you make up your own. <laughs> Choose your own <laughs> adventure. Uh -huh. and, and that's the side of a, of a great show that keeps audiences talking, you know, after the show mm -hmm. and when telling their friends, like, you got to go see this. Plus it's October, you know, c coming up and it's Halloween time. Like who, you know, people love psychological thrillers. I mean, this is the perfect time to go see the show. It's very hard to do live something like this. And I think we pull it off well. Go ahead and go check it out through October 23rd. Thank you both so much for your time today. Steppenwolf.org is where you can go ahead and get those tickets. Uh, Melissa, Lissandra, thank you so much. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you. Gracias, mi gente. Bye-bye. Okay.